Games and other programs often need to present different scenes to the user. For this discussion, I'll define a scene as a window layout and related user interface that are significantly different from any other. For example, a game program may have a starting or splash scene, a main gameplay scene, a high scores scene, maybe a setting scene, and perhaps an ending scene. This is planned to be a two-part video. In this first video, I'll present a generic solution for writing a program containing any number of scenes. I'll let you know right up front that this approach takes advantage of object-oriented programming. In particular, it uses the concepts of encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance, although you don't need to know much about these core tenets of object-oriented programming to use the system. In the second video, I plan to show how you can use this approach to send and receive data between scenes and a few more extensions. Here are two examples that I've built in Pygame. I'll put links in the description below. The first is a game called Dodger. This game is used as an example in my book, Object-Oriented Python. It has a splash screen that you can think of as a menu. It has a start screen where the game plays. And it has a high score screen. And this is a game called Rats. It's a much more complicated uh, splash screen. It has a high score screen and a plague scene. So I've just recently released this game uh, for free on itch.io. It was very challenging to code and very fun to play. Let me just show you basically how it works. So you have to kill the rats coming out of these rack factories. And then you can kill the factories themselves. Programmers often struggle with how to implement different scenes in Pygame. The typical first approach is to use a state machine. That is, you start by defining a number of constants, each representing a scene. String constants work well for this. The actual values don't matter as long as they are unique. Then you have a variable, typically called state, and you set the value of the variable to the starting scene. Whenever you want to go to a different scene, you set the state variable to a different value for the new scene. Within the big loop of your Pygame program, you have a series of if elif statements to do different things depending upon which scene the program is in. In this example, we're doing the typical actions in a Pygame program, responding to events, Then updating based on what scene we're in, and drawing everything based on the current scene. This does work. However, as the program grows, this approach can cause the code to become very long, confusing, and hard to read. It becomes difficult to make changes in the appropriate places. Sometimes a change in one scene will have an unexpected consequence in some other scene. Now I'll demonstrate how we can use a generic system where each scene is implemented as an object and all are controlled by a scene manager. Let's start with a very simple example. In this sample program, we'll have three scenes, A, B, and C. Each scene will have two buttons which can take you to either of the other scenes. Here's the program running. The program starts in scene A, but I can transition to scene B or scene C. If I go to scene B, it's just like scene A, except now I can go to A or I can go to C. And if I go to scene C, I can go to scenes A or B. But I've also added some minimal movement to show that you can do something active in a scene. The program uses my scene manager that manages the main Pygame loop 
and handles all switching between scenes. It also handles any communication that you may want between scenes. Each scene that you want to write must be written as a separate class. Therefore, each scene has its own set of instance variables. This provides encapsulation. I've written a generic scene class to be used as the base class for all scenes that you write. This uses inheritance. Each scene you write must contain a minimal set of commonly named methods that the scene manager calls. This uses polymorphism. Each scene can be expanded to do whatever you want. However, you don't have to fully understand these object-oriented concepts to use the system. The scene manager comes from a package called pig helpers. In addition to the scene manager, it contains a number of other classes that can be used with building Pygame programs. Here's how to download and install it using pip at the command line. While you're at it, you might want to also download my pig widgets package. While this is not required to use the scene manager, I'll use it in my demo program. This package provides simple graphical user interface widgets like buttons, text boxes, input text fields, and many more. Now here's a diagram showing the different pieces that make up the demo program. The white boxes represent the pieces that you write, the ones that make your program unique. You have to write a small main program and each of the scenes that you want to have. The black boxes with the white text are the ones that I have written and I'm providing for free through the pig helpers package. The main program is small. It must initialize Pygame, instantiate all your scenes, instantiate the scene manager, then turn over control to the scene manager. Each scene that you write must be written as a class with specifically named methods. And all scenes are controlled by the scene manager. Now let's look at the implementation. We'll start with the main program. First, we import pygame and the pig helpers package. Then we import a constants file. This is just a small file that defines the window size and defines uh, keys that we're going to use. Just some strings for, the, uh, for each scene. Next, we initialize Pygame in the standard way. Here's the important part. We build a dictionary. And the dictionary is created by using each of these different scene keys. And we instantiate each scene object passing in the window we wind up with a dictionary. Next, we instantiate the scene manager. We pass in the scenes dictionary, and we pass in our frames per second, and we get back a scene manager object. Finally, we tell the scene manager object to start running. The scene manager is fully open source, and you can freely see the code at my GitHub account. But for now, all you need to know is that the scene manager runs the standard main loop of all Pygame programs, so you don't have to code it. Further, the scene manager knows which scene object is the current one, and every time through the main loop, it calls a number of methods that must be provided in every scene that you write. It calls handle inputs to handle all events and keyboard keys, update to allow the current scene to update anything it wants to, and draw to draw everything that the scene needs to draw. It also handles the quit event for you. Here's the code of the scene A scene in our demo program. Scene B is almost identical, except it has a different set of buttons. Scene C is also very similar, except it has some extra code to handle the uh, animation. As I said, each scene is written as a class. In the class statement, you provide the name of the scene. And you also indicate that it inherits from pighelpers.scene. 
The inherited class provides much of the underlying machinery to make the connection to the scene manager, allows for switching between scenes, and allows for the communication between all scenes. There's two more quick things I wanted to mention about how to build a scene. Uh, the first one is this in this handle inputs call. When this is called by the scene manager, the second parameter, the key pressed list, is actually the same list that you would get from calling pygame.get pressed. In fact, the scene manager does that for you and just passes that to your scene. The second thing is that you can add any additional methods that you want in your scene. Uh, it's just that these are the necessary ones that the scene manager is going to call for you in every scene. In the init method, we save away the window that was passed in and we create a message field for the title. We create a button to go to the B scene and we create a button that goes to the C scene. The next method you need to write is handle inputs and it gets past a list of events and a list of all keys that are down. So here you have your own event loop. And just the way that my pig widgets buttons work, uh, we check to see if the uh, B button was pressed. And if so, here's the key line that tells it to go to a new scene. If the C button was pressed, we go to scene C. And finally, we have the draw method. And the draw method just draws everything. So we fill the window with a color, we draw the message field, we draw the B button, and we draw the C button. Now if we look at the code for scene B, it's almost identical. The only difference is a, a different message at the top. And now we have buttons that allow you to go to scene A or scene C. And those are handled in the handle inputs method here. The difference is in scene C, we wanted to show a little bit of an animation. So here we set up the animation. We have a circle. Uh, we give it an X and a Y value. And the important difference is here, we have a method called update. And update is called every time through the main loop. So all we do here is we increase the X position of the circle and we check if the X position of the circle has gone past the, the width of the window. If so, we let it wrap around back to zero. And now we draw all the things uh, in the scene and we draw the circle. So this gives us a little bit of animation. The bottom line is this. Each scene is written as a separate class. The scenes are instantiated up front in the main program, but navigating between scenes is handled by a single call, and it's right here. This is actually implemented inside the inherited pickhelpers.scene file. Each scene runs completely independently from any other scene. And the scene manager remembers which scene is current and calls the appropriate methods of that scene. All other scenes are available, but sit dormant in the background. But don't buy yet. The scene manager and the inherited scene also provide much more functionality to allow data exchange between scenes. I plan to go into detail on this topic in the second video.